Hello, welcome to question and answer number 17. Today we're going to be looking at a YouTube comment made under the program breakdown of the Westside Barbell template. This comes from Ian K 76 How's it going Ian? Um, it's, quite a, it's about a month old, um, so apologies for not answering sooner. Um, he writes, a very charitable review. Um, in retrospect, I would tend to agree I don't necessarily agree with the principles of um, Westside Barbell and um, I didn't want to go out right ahead and just slide the program trying to find the positives and the negatives of the program um, it's pretty good at what it does which is making uh, which is creating uh, multiply world records in the SPF which is pretty much all it does but it's very good at doing it so I guess you uh, it there are a number of lifters who have used the exact same program within like the GBPF and other IPF based programs to good success as well. Plenty of GB team members have used Westside, so it's got to be doing something right. But yeah, I would agree. It was, probably was a reasonably charitable review. Um, there are, you could pick a lot of holes in the program, or you can look at the major holes and what it does right, which is what I try to do. Try to present a bit more of a balanced um, review rather than just go straight ahead and sledge it. Um, anyway, have you come up his question, or his, he's got a couple of questions. Have you come across any coaches in your field that use recognizably west side training method with athletes outside of powerlifting? Are indeed with powerlifters for that matter. In some ways, I think it makes more sense as a general strength training program rather than a specific powerlifting program with lots of lift variety and lower volumes of work. You could argue excelling at a couple of lifts matters a lot less to non powerlifters that are trying to build general strength. Exercises could still be tailored to the needs of the sport. I'm still keeping things the general west side framework um first of all i don't personally know many coaches within sport or strength and conditioning that utilize west side principles within the training i know a lot of coaches might use some of the gimmicks produced by west side so they accommodate and resistance band training and um, chain training a sort of gimmicky practices, wobbly barbells, um, the sort of things that have been used for the variety within their program. Some of the good things that if Westside didn't create that they advocate, um, the reverse hyper gets used a lot in sport, very good exercise. Um, safety squat bar is an excellent piece of equipment for anyone who sustains a shoulder or hand injury, upper limb injury. It allows you to continue um, working the legs with free weights which is a great option so those are two things that are, are very useful and are, that are used widely throughout sport um, but as far as the actual template and program it doesn't tend to be very popular within the UK within a kind of performance training environment or more within a kind of sports training environment it tends to be a lot more influenced certainly within Scotland it's still very much influenced by the kind of the Mark Stone uh, Mike Stone, um, kind of model, three weeks up, one week down, um, yeah, sort of periodization routine, sticking to like sets of fives, three sets of five tends to be the main kind of paradigm, paradigm shift uh, within Scottish strength and conditioning. Um, some programs I have broke through to a few kind of sports programs like the like your sets of five, three, one. Um, but it tends to be fairly straightforward. Um, don't know if it, the, the kind of block periodization of tens, fives, whatever, is so popular anymore. It certainly was very popular um, within uh, UK strength and as far as I was aware, in fan of five to ten years ago. Still getting used, no doubt, but uh, West Side and uh, it's kind of the actual program doesn't tend to get used. Some people, um, I've seen some people trying to use what they thought was West Side within um, their programming, but it, it was not the West Side protocol. Um, I think it was like a 
a misinterpreted version of the speed work element of the program. Um, people trying to use the speed squats and stuff to generate speed as well, obviously not um, useful since the fastest you're going to squat is going to be like 1.2 meters a second, 1.5 meters a second, which is not fast. It's very, very slow. Um, so if you're using like trying to use your like a squat or a deadlift to generate velocity, <coughs> it's pretty stupid. Um, especially within a kind of running or jumping sport where velocities are like ten meters a second plus. Throwing sports where velocities are like twenty meters a second plus, you can't move a barbell that fast. You're never going to move a barbell that fast. So why try? Use barbells for what they're good for: it's force production, and as a bridge to rate of force production work. Like slides and stuff, you can use like power cleans as your bridge. Um, but yeah, not really seen a lot of it to be honest. Um, some of the points, I think he does make a couple of good points within his um, questions. Some of them kind of pertaining to the general strength qualities required within lifting. It becomes very easy when coaching any kind of athlete and a sports athlete to get fixated on one lift for um, strength, so for lower body. Uh, my own um, pitfalls would be I tend to fixate on back squat pretty much with a lot of athletes. Um, I fixate a lot probably on bench press, for, bench press for upper body, overhead press for upper body, depending on the athlete. I tend to fixate quite a lot on chin, although I'm trying to fixate more on um, bench row. But t we tend to hang our hat, or at least anyway I do. I don't know if I speak for anyone else, but as a tendency with a profession, it is to hang your hat on like one key exercise as your marker of um, strength progression but then within that you need to accept that there's large amounts of skill mastery involved and um, as any powerlifter knows it takes a long time to get good at back squat it doesn't happen overnight it's not quite clean and jerk but it does take a while and um, and a lot of that strength is squat specific so because you get a better back squat you might get a better deadlift off the offset you might get a better front squat you're probably not going to get a well you might get better lunging probably less um less so you might get a better snatch you might get better clean and then to think that that getting better in the back squat is going to mean that you're going to be able to run faster and jump higher outside of the general strength will make you do will help you do these things and will make you do these things um, tends to be a very spurious assumption certainly one that I'm not that I think that getting better at back squats going to necessarily make an athlete a better athlete um, I do think getting stronger is going to make an athlete a better athlete but within just one exercise the remit of one exercise is probably fairly naive and it's a very easy trap to fall into certainly one that I fall into quite a lot so having a general um, list of exercises to improve on is probably a pretty good idea for an athlete and um, I've been toying with the idea of like a strength matrix so rather than having like your squat as your measure of lower body strength you have a measure of a back squat a front squat um, like two two bilateral pushes um, two hinges and a couple of unilaterals so an example of a matrix could be back squat front squat um, RDL deadlift um, single leg leg press could be a, a five matrix of just gross um, output or gross, gross force production lower body exercises that could be used together to better indicate um, the strength qualities of an athlete's lower body also within an upper body you could look at um, like a bench press um, a shoulder press single arm dumbbell shoulder press chin up wide grip pull up bench row single arm bench row as measures of um just total or more varied pushing and pulling strength so you're not just relying on one implement or one plane to decide how strong the athlete is so the kind of a program that is going to bias you towards varying the angles that you develop strength in, varying the implements you develop strength with, it's probably going to work out better for a field athlete. Um, 
for like a throw in, jump in, run an athlete who's trying just to access the um, force reduction, so a sprinter who's trying to get faster, a throw who's trying to throw further. Depends how far down the rabbit hole you are. It depends on the coach you're working with. It depends on the wider picture. You could be like someone like Charlie Francis who utilized power clean and half squat, um, or you could be down where you're bond choke or you're a throwing coach and you've developed general strength qualities to a point where you're squatting near enough three times body weight, you're clean and jerking like two times body weight or close to um, with like heavy strong athletes and um, you're benching like 250, 260. You're in a kind of place where to get any stronger at those movements or get any better barbell movements is probably going to require you to give up your sport because you're just at a level where you develop so well that you need to look at things like special exercises. For th so, um, like bondage chokes transfer for sport um, talks a lot on that, and that kind of get misconstrued quite a lot within the strength conditioning community, where the basic um, exercises get poo pooed by some people because they're not specific to sport. Well, of course, they're not specific to sport. You train the strength quality. You're not training them to be the nat to do rugby or to do football. That's why you do sports specific training. You're just there to train a physical quality. And if you have a rugby player or a football player who has squatting three times their body weight, um, then yes, looking at special exercises is probably a good idea. I don't know many strength and conditioning coaches in that um, within field sports who are going to have that problem. So it's probably enough to fo do the basics well and look at the other aspects of your program, speed training, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think the West Side template would be a good way of doing it. Um, there's too much failure training, too much maximal training, trying to go heavy all the time and back squat or squat variations, pulling variations, where you're just trying to work out to two or three RM. Intensity is too high. Um, it's going to take away from what you've got in the field. If you're in a pre season scenario where you've got the time, um, there's no competition. The peak for the weekend, you don't have any competitive, competitive matches, you're not within your competitive calendar, then it could be an idea, although I would rather spend, I would guarantee I would get better results from another, another way of programming. Um, the rep training um, is reasonably decent, can be used for upper body or you can use it for um, like secondary, third assistance work, but again, I would just work on volume and keep everything sub-maximal just so I'm not eating into sports practice, I'm not eating into speed training, I'm not eating into conditioning. I'm Weight should never really take away from a program, which should add to the program. Shouldn't really be somewhere where well, there's no real great need to add a lot of overall fatigue to somebody to get a benefit out of it, so don't. And so West Side is a pretty terrible program for that because it takes away it, pretty much every session apart from the speed session is going to take away some kind of fatigue, some kind of neural, some kind of mechanical, some kind of metabolic fatigue is going to be induced from that session and it's going to take away from other practices. And let's be honest, weight is not a huge focus for most athletes. It's just a nice extra. It's an add-on. It helps. It's like mobility and stretching. It's an add-on. It's positive. As soon as it starts becoming a negative and taking away from sessions, then you're fucking up. Um, and what else I was going to end on a note? I can't remember. Yeah, speed work for uh, producing speed. I like what I mentioned before. Silly, silly concept. Um, yeah, so this is Mark, castironstrength.com, signing off. Um, you can send me some questions if you want them answered. Speedpowerperformance at gmail.com. Um, you can uh, get on the forums, castironstrength.com. You can leave a comment under this video or any other video. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. This is Mark, castironstrength.com, signing off.